Welcome to Balance Studios. My name is Phil Miglarese. I'm a sixth degree black belt under Helson Gracie. It's my brother Ricardo Miglarese, fifth degree black belt. We're gonna show you the top 10 techniques for the street from Gracie Jiu Jitsu. So here we go, I'll show you the first one. So it's, if I get thrown to the floor, find myself on the ground, I wanna do what's called standing up in base. Base means balance. So you don't wanna go down. Rick is above me as the attacker, the aggressor. So I'm gonna show you the basic way to do it. And I'm gonna do it from this angle first. So I put one leg out like this, step up on this leg, two hands on the ground. So this is the simple stand, standing in base. And then I slide this leg through, get into my base. Rick will test me with double hands so I'm not falling down. So even though as a Gracie Jiu Jitsu black belt, I like going to the floor, I like to know from the feet that no one's pushing me down. So one more time. So a leg comes out like this, two hands this way. I stand up, head down, hips high, base out, knees out. Rick tries that base on me, I'm not falling down. I'm not falling that way. So that's just the basic idea, okay? So I'll show you in the next technique, I'll show you how to get up a different way when the attack is a little bit different. All right, here's move number two. So. This is when I'm here on the ground, guys above me here, I'm looking to stand up, but I'm gonna use my kicks. So I'm using both hands here, I'm lifting my butt off the air, and I wanna almost tilt my foot. I do this because I have a better chance of hitting the target here, as opposed to being here. So as soon as I get my distance that I need, both hands on the ground, hopping up, and rate my combat stance here, okay? Keeping my distance, okay? So again, here like this, coming up, lifting my butt up and like a crap walk, I'm throwing my kick right here. So as soon as I throw my kick, my hand comes to the ground, standing up, hands are here. Part three, same sort of details, right? I get thrown down to the floor, my attacker is above me. I'm able to actually kick, and when he makes distance, two hands on the floor, I actually get a little bit like a foot or two more, more distance with a little hop. 100% weight on my hands, guys. You can do it on one hand, it's cool, but starting at home, you want two hands on the floor. So again, Ricardo advances, I kick, and I actually get him away. Two hands, hop back, combat hands, one hand high like you're talking on the phone, other hand in the face. Now, he gets closer to me. So I try to defend myself this way, but he advances too fast. So I'm laying down here, toes turned out. Bicycle kicks. Kick to the chest, knees, groin. If he's close enough, he starts to try to hit me. Face, okay? Bicycle, get them away, get them away. Now I can sit up, kick again, hop back. Hands up, again. I get thrown down, bicycle kicks, get this person away. Sit up, kick again, up and out. All right, defend yourself. All right, number four. So we're gonna deal with the same kind of attacker, pushes me on the ground here, all right? So I'm doing everything right. I'm getting my space here, I'm looking to get the distance. Now, always keeping my eye on the attacker, just to make sure I never wanna look away, just in the, in the event that he advances forward here, but from this distance, I'm looking to put both hands on the ground. I hop back, and as I hop back, I notice the person's coming towards me. So I'm already in the stance for a double leg, okay? So I'm gonna spring off my back foot, go on here. I can either step my other leg in to pick up and turn, or I can drive my knee straight to the ground here. In the event, when this happens here, if I look to get my space, in the event, as when I go back here, I'm here, and as I drive my knee through, he keeps his actual uh, weight on me. As I drive, it doesn't knock me out. I step this foot out, and turn. So it's always with that heel, foot, toe, okay? So as I'm coming through, take the step here, Heel, foot, toe, here, driving my knee through, here, stepping up. Number 
move number five, blocking the sucker punch. So you stand in front of somebody and you have an argument, take notice that how our stance is. If at any point I move back into a combat stance and you're defending, you need to go in a combat stance, so it changes. So this is more of a social stance, a disagreement over a parking space or whatever. So my hands need to be up. So I'll speak to the person like this, so that it's easy to block my face if anything ever happens. So if Rick takes a squat at me with a punch, I can hook over right here. Squatting down, like that standing in base, I'm standing here heavy so I don't get hurt. So if my hands are down, I'm gonna have less time to defend myself. My hands are here, call like a prayer hand, like this, talking to someone, I can hook over, and you could easily bump them in the face with your head, push them against the wall, just hold them. So this is part one, you gotta get the arms. Now the reason why I hook like this without my thumb is so he cannot, go again, he cannot retract and hit me again, so I'm stuck to him. And I always grab two, not just one, because it's gonna be a one-two number in general, okay? So my hands will be like this, I'm stepping and hooking, my head goes lower than their chin, and I hold and block myself. And there are a bunch of moves after that, which we'll show you in a moment. All right, here we are, moves number six. So, same idea, person's gonna throw the punch, I'm blocking the punch, making sure key notes, I'm keeping the hand over so he can't retract his punch, keeping my head below his so I don't get head but I can use one come in. So now, off of this, if the person keeps pulling me back, I'm looking to wrap one arm. So a lot of times I'll do this. The way I get to do this, I'll keep your leg over is I just pick the arm up and I catch it like this. I have my students, when I do teach, just do this and catch. So it's familiar when you throw the punch, it's this here. The second hand, I'm gonna travel underneath. But look, I put my forehead to the chest and as I come underneath here, I'm already planted with my head where I need to be, right underneath his chin, ear, and everything is tucked. My, his one leg is in between my leg. The point of his toe is pointing at my heel, causing an L-shaped position here, okay? So I'm having, I have him trapped here, have him trapped here, I'm in base. I go to lean him forward. I'm looking to step my back leg, not all the way, okay? I look to step right before his foot, and I'm also giving myself some room to throw my hip in there. So my hip wants to exceed his leg here. And look, it's just a nice little straightening of the leg. Should be nothing. And people at home, make sure you practice this coming up. Try not to throw your partner and coming down. That's actually the, the throw is the easiest. So again, maybe from this side. One, two. See how I trap that? My head's underneath his. I look to come underneath and I'm right here. I look to keep him bent forward a little bit and I'm gonna step my foot inside. One, two. Don't throw your partner. Unless it's a six degree black belt. <laughs> Move number seven. Blocking the bear hug so I don't get hurt. So the bear hug will look like this. Rick will come under. He can lift me in the air here. Hurt me, throw me, put me in the trunk. Bad news. So the first thing, like I said before, that we do in jiu-jitsu is get the base. You don't want to fall down, you don't want to get thrown, you want to stay on your feet for as long as you can. I'm going to put a frame on, fist, okay? This way, fingers, thumb on top, frame with your thumb. Use that thumb. If I go like this, it'll break. Hold with the thumb, I'm going to press against rip. So he gets me here, I frame myself. Sometimes I'll need to pick his head up here to get my frame inside. My hips go back as I push away. Now. With my hips back, if I needed to throw a knee, I can throw a knee. Otherwise, combat hands move away. So again, Rick catch me here. I move my hips back first, jump down into a base. Frame is on, and I push away, okay? Frame part two. So Rick will get me here. Same thing, my hand is here, right on his face. Could be his nose to pick him up, but I'm gonna get nicely on the jaw. I back up with my second hand. As I push my hips away, I push to the ceiling that way. Not that way. Up. Make the jaw go back. One more time. Get caught. Hips back. Turn. Move away. Okay? At any point, you can throw that knee. Alright. Here's number eight video here. So we're going to deal with the grip. So basic grip here. Phil's going to grab me. Solid grip here. 
So I want to refrain from just trying to rip my wrist out. This is not going to work with a bigger, stronger. So as they grab, I'm looking to get the point of my elbow to right about here. So I'm always going in base. Every stand-up position self-defense thing we do, we always start in base. And I'm looking to just bring my elbow in to break the grip. Get that distance, okay? So if somebody comes, they go to grab. I'm in base because I don't know whether they want to pull me, push me, whatever they want to do. My elbow is going to go into right here, and I'm here. Now, in the event, the person grabs, and he's super strong here. Now, this is not working. Take the second hand here and here, okay? Be sure not to pull with this, and the guy lets go, and you hit yourself in the face. I've done it in my younger years. One, two, three, here, okay? Move number nine. My attacker grabs me by the throat this way, and we are not against a wall mid-room like this. I'm gonna grip the wrist, and I'll show you what it looks like this way, okay? Thumbs together, and you grip as tight as you can, elbows up. So I get caught, elbows up here. I pull and step in front this way. Elbow goes in front of my knee. Notice how my knees are bowed open. Squeeze, as I look up, I pull and break that elbow. So I have the ribs right on that elbow joint, bad news. So Rick catches me, I'm here, elbows up, I catch. And I use these two fingers on each hand to really gather up that wrist. Turn and twist, step in and I hit him, pow, with my hip hard. Squat down, control, as I look up, I got that arm. Be careful at home, understand the tap, people tap out. So you need to let go or just don't get close to the full pressure if you can. All right, so we've been dealing with a lot of distancing here, okay? Now this is when your attacker is going irate and throwing punches. It is important to keep the distance and hand in front of the face. I'm gonna force him to go around to punch me, okay? So I'm looking for my opportunity. I'm not running in on him to get hit. He's gonna be coming in on me. So I have my base, as he's coming in on me, coming in on me, coming in on me, I'm looking to close the distance and protect myself here. So I'm looking for that big one, I'm gonna hit right to here. Now, there's a lot of different ways I can grab the person. One of my favorites is the over-under. So as I catch here, I'm looking to go over the arm and underneath, and I'm gonna go a lot slower than I normally would, but I'm gonna run him into the wall here, okay? So my hands are up, he's coming at me, walk. So I'm lunging forward, protecting myself here. My chin is tucked, everything is protected, but I am also not blinding myself from, from him. So as he throws, he's one here. So as I go, I'm wrapping, I step, and I'm running him right into the wall here, and just controlling him here.